Tanya, one of the knocks on Cyborg over the years has been she has not faced the toughest competition because there isn't a whole lot of fighters in that weight class that, that she can fight. Do you feel like you can, you can you can bring that and change the conversation and actually give her that, that good competition? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that uh, I'm a step up in competition for anybody. Um, definitely for her, I think I could fight out of my weight class, up or down, either way, 10 pounds. So, um, you know, I think that uh, when you look at her opponents and my opponents, I kind of feel like my opponents have been tougher in the past, um, and I've dominated them. So I think that ultimately this is a super fight. It's definitely going to be a good, uh, good opportunity to uh, prove that I'm up here where I need to be. Tanya, how quickly did you take this fight? Uh, as soon as they told me how much they were paying me, <laughs> I take it. <laughs> but other than that, no, I, I've been waiting to, to get an offer in, uh, for years and years and years, so it just came down to them actually uh, throwing something at me. What was the reaction? I mean, was it like you were happy or was it like, Jesus, finally? Um, bittersweet. I mean, goddamn, man, I got to fight out of my weight class to get in. So, But, you know, uh, it is what it is. I'm, I'm definitely the type of champion that fights anybody. I feel like I'm the best, so I feel like I can fight the best, and, and I need to fight the best, and I need to prove to myself how good I am. So, you know, this is uh, learning nothing in this that's out of normal than I do every day when I come to work. So, just here to, here to work. Some people say it's like a no-lose situation for you, right? Like, if you win, amazing. If you lose, they'll bring you back. You'll do 135. Do you look at it that way at all? Well, I plan on winning, and then uh, I'm sure we'll get a rematch with her. I'm sure that's part of the deal. It is part of the deal, but uh, then we'll come back and fight again. So, that's my plans. When you step in on Saturday, what do you think the weight differential will actually be by the time you, you know, go through hydration? Well, for me, I usually, I like when I cut to 35, it's a 30-pound cut. So it's a lifestyle change. So this is a 20-pound cut for me. Um, I was already on my way down for Invictus. So I was already 10 pounds down. And uh, I've, I've been like starting to lose it and trying to eat as much as I can just to keep my weight up. I know that once we weigh in, my body doesn't put as much on as... as like her body's used to, she'll probably be walking at 60, 65. I think I'll be walking at 50, 55, so 10 pounds, just, I mean, normal. She, she fights 10 pounds above me, so I think she'll just weigh 10 pounds more than me in the fight. If you do win the title, you're going to stay at 145, right? You're going to stay and defend the belt. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if you heard, but that was a little bit of an issue before uh, before this fight where the champion didn't didn't stay and defend the belt. Well, I'm here to fight the, the best one in the weight class, so I'm obviously if I win that belt, I'm staying and, and I'm going to defend it and make as much money as I can while I'm doing it. <laughs> In the rematch, obviously, it seems like a natural if you win this fight, but I've never heard of it being like put in the contacts or anything. How did that all come about? Um, well, obviously, me and me and Chris have the same manager, so you know, uh, uh, it's just one of them things. I think that he a, does a great job, and he knows what he's looking for, and he's experienced enough to know uh, what I need if if I do win this fight. You know, I'm not going to obviously win the title and then go down to 35. That makes no sense um, for me. I'll fight 45, 35, 25 just to get as much fights in as I can before I have to retire or too old. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fight as much as they'll give me opportunities. Do you think she has faced uh, the caliber of a uh, durable wrestler that, that, that you are and you've shown that throughout your career? Do you think she's faced anyone like that? No, no. I think uh, I mean I, I I'm not saying there ain't like better wrestlers in this sport than me, but you know there's probably better girls in the sport better than everything than I am, but. Uh, I think what it comes down to is I'm able to put it together and, and be an ultimate, like, all-around, well-rounded fighter. And I think that that's part of it, you know. And I think that I'm a really smart fighter. And over the years, I've, I've created a style that, that fits me. And I know what kind of fighter I am and where I need to fight to, to win fights. When you do get in the ring, what does that extra 10 pounds, I mean, how does it change what you can do and, and just how your body moves? Uh, you know, I, I know when I fought at 35, a lot of girls would come and make weight and then they'd be posting online how much weight they put on and uh, at the end of the day I, I really don't care how heavy you are I don't plan on that being a factor that ain't a factor I don't fight muscle for muscle and weight for weight I'm a real like uh, I guess I'm in just a different style man I like to get out from underneath people I don't like to carry their weight I don't like to do things where I have to fight strength for strength can you put together some kind of strategy or game plan I know fighters don't like to give away their game plan but is there a way in which you think you can get this done um, no, I don't game plan. <laughs> I look at I look at my opponent and I uh, see you know where they're at and what they do and and I'll get opponents in my gym to train with me that are, are similar to her style. But I feel like if I game plan, if I go in there and get shut down, then that's the type of thing that it breaks a fighter. That's the type of thing that's going to turn you over and, and make you feel like you're losing. And I don't like that feeling. So I go in open-minded and, and wherever the fight goes, I'll take it and go with it. Obviously, it's been fortunate for you to have those two fighters drop out. What did you think when Jermaine and Megan pulled out of the fight? Um, 
I think it's coward. <laughs> I think when you have a belt, uh, you're supposed to fight the best there is. That's that's what being a world champion is. So you fight everybody they put in front of you. You don't say no to anybody. And um, I think that in Jermaine's sake, I think I think that she just. Uh, she knew she wasn't the champion, you know what I mean? I think that she knew she wasn't going to win that fight or, or didn't have confidence she wasn't going to lose that fight or win that fight or whatever. So I think that she just pulled out for that reason. I, I just, at the end of the day, whether she's she's cheated in the past or not or whatever everybody wants to say is the reason, I, I just personally don't care. Uh, she's making the weight and she's passing drug tests. So she's in the weight class. USC has her on the roster. So you fight her or you don't. People have been talking about Cyborg. When is she going to be a champion in the UFC for, for years now? Now this is her chance to do it. Do you feel like you've kind of been cast as just the other person? Oh, for my whole career. <laughs> Is that a joke? My whole career. I mean, everybody I beat gets signed with the UFC. So it's uh, it's been one of the things that, um, you know, I just sat back and watched and I, I finally accepted and um, just decided to let it go. And I, I wasn't upset about it. I just went along with it and enjoyed where I was at and the, the experiences I had and the title I had in Invicta. So. Do you have any sense of why they weren't interested in signing you? I'm too good looking, guys. Too good looking. And I'm single. None of you guys, you all be single if I was in the UFC. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs>